is the cantilever coming down, this is it getting stuck to the surface, and this is it pulling away and recording the vibrations. Because um, it uses, once it gets near there, the van der Waals force, which they call it, steps in and snaps it in. So then I have a live, I see if I can.
Well, that's plain. Yes, that's right. So it's plain in another universe. It's just an example of photo multiplying the electron. General, not only about light, the whole of the world. <sighs> that was so close. And it would take to go from here to the mirror and over here, and I'm plotting it this way, directly under the place where I wanted to go in the mirror. Now the time it takes to go here, we just found out, was pretty large, and getting going down, more or less, as we got near the center, and of course it's a kind of a symmetric curve, and it goes up here. What do I mean by this? Is this, this at this, let's make it very different. If you're going to reflect from this point here, this particular loop, then this is the amount of time. This height is a graph, the amount of time. There's a lot of time. If on the other hand, Colors, colors. If, on the other hand, you were to go somewhere near in the middle and come down this way and go so, then the time it would take is less. And it's plotted on this scale as this height from here, here. You don't have to worry about the plot. You understand the idea. The time is big, comes down, and goes back up again. That's all. Depending on where you are. And now what does that mean for our arrows? It means this. That the contribution from this one corresponds to an arrow like this, a little baby arrow. Baby, because I make these things very tiny in the end. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to try going back to the other one, if I can, and just see if that one will play. General, not only about light, the whole of the world is built this way. Right? Not it's just an example, photo multiplying or electron counter goes off, things like that. Probability, you calculate probability of events this way. The probability of an event that comes out in the end is proportional to the size of a circle <laughs> made by an arrow on a plane, calculating plane over here, so it doesn't do with the geometry of that. This arrow on the plane is called the amplitude, sometimes called the probability amplitude. For the event. So everything that you want to count, like the chance of the counter goes off, has a probability. No, it has a probability amplitude. There's an amplitude that it goes off. The square of that, the area. Now, that's fine when you're talking take about roughly this idea. And I'm not a physicist, so don't hold me to anything that I'm saying now, because it might be a lie. <laughs> Um, but this is his diagram, um, of course, this is visible in a mirror, so this is the mirror surface, this is the part that's visible, even though photons hit the whole surface of this, that's the bit that's visible, and it's visible because the probability of it being visible is higher at that point than any other point along the list. So what I wanted to do with my colleague Kevin was to be like Mare and make all of those visible. So I wanted to make every photon that would hit the surface analogous to every photon. I mean, there's millions of them, so I can't do that. But I can get up to about 2,000 before the computer goes. <laughs> can't put it um, so this is that, and though well, you can't see it, this is the mathematics that we chose. So it's one photon at one frequency, like one variation, like blue variation of the light. But I can't remember how many nanometers it was, 475 nanometer light weight. So we took that and we used that to do the mass. And I've got the next slide, which won't make any sense until later. So we might go back to that slide, but it's a cool slide. <laughs> so <laughs> what we did was we took an image of a, you. So you walk in up to this camera, it spots you, and then you are then um, translated into this 2,000 spinning heads. Because uh, Feynman says that photons spin at 40 trillion revolutions per second. Now, if your car could do that, I mean, that would be really fast. <laughs> so, if you imagine that, that, and I want you to remember that for the last bit of the talk. So, this was some of the imagery that we created from that process from and you 
can just start to see, in some cases, a hidden appearing. And then we put it in, realized that along the way, that when we take a Feynman's diagram, and this is the exciting bit, it's like a punchline. When we took Feynman's diagram and we did it as one linear video of 2,000 heads spinning, we realized that those extremities either side, that the head reappeared. So it started to make a comeback. And then we started to think, well, is that the photon? Because you know the photon will be anywhere in the world, in the universe, and be here. And the only time it's here is when it's measured every time everywhere else. It's not here, so it's everywhere. So in some terms, you're all here now because I'm looking at you. As soon as I turn away, you go everywhere in the universe. And I turn back, <laughs> and back again, which is kind of freaky. So you're classical physics, but the rest is not classical <laughs> physics. And so classical physics means that you're there now, but when I Way into the short. So I became really interested in this notion of which is Everett, um, who came up with the idea first, and he was really good. There's a great CBC Massey lecture by Neil Turok about the whole history of quantum physics. It's a great series you can download on iTunes. It only costs about sixteen dollars, and it's better than most movies. Um, but he gives a whole history of how we got to quantum mechanics, and he really negates, he thinks it's just really bad science. What's the name here? Neil Chuck, and it's the Massey Lectures, and you can get them on iTunes, CBC Radio, but they are really good. But what the, what he doesn't say, he says they're bad, but what he says is they're good, because they're the kind of chaos thinking that happens when people don't know what to do. Because he's into the singularity. You know, and you can't deal with the singularity if you've got multiple universes because the singularity is the singularity of importance. So you can't. Anyway, so I just want to show you this is what I ended up trying to make. So left and right would be two bottom spaces on that line that are brought together in a kind of painting to demonstrate. So you walk in, this would be your image up front. And if it works, then, then there is the parallel, you appearing in these parallel universes. So I became really interested in this, you know, like as a concept, because so then, I also then, in the role, looked at that, and if anybody knows what that is, it's a similar thing to, but if Deleuze wrote about Francis Bacon, and he wrote about diagrams, and I became very interested in Feynman's diagrams of how light works and the probability of things occurring. And Francis Bacon's early paintings, his underpaintings, are diagrammatic of something potentially emerging, some other world.